Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Let's talk about fenbendazole. Why is it so popular nowadays? Why is it uh, one of the most commonly used alternative remedy against cancer? And we will talk about Joe Tippen's unique story of cancer cure. Talk about fenbendazole, its mechanisms, its problems. And, of course, discuss successful and not very successful stories of the patients. Let's get started. So, fenbendazole is a popular antiparasitic drug uh, used in animals. The thing is, it affects microtubules, killing the parasites. And it affects um, mostly micro microtubules of parasites uh, compared to mammals, meaning to us. That means it affects parasites more than us. Also, it's poorly absorbed uh, in the guts, that's why it mostly works in the guts. That's why it was always considered to be just antiparasitic drug. But if you remember, we were discussing with you drug repurposing, how we redirect some drugs against other diseases. Uh, and a um, big field is antiparasitic drugs against cancer. We discussed it in separate video. And here also the story is very similar. In August 2016, fenbendazole got a very big attention worldwide because of Joe Tippen's story. He was diagnosed with small cell lung cancer that is very aggressive and um, usually takes lives very fast. Joe Tippens took part in the clinical trial of a novel anti-cancer drug, but unofficially, illegally, he self-prescribed fenbendazole as it was advised by his uh, friend uh, veterinarian. He was taking 222 milligrams per day, plus vitamin E, plus bioavailable curcumin, plus CBD oil, cannabidiol. And in three months on PET scan, they found out that he is free of tumor. Yes, it can happen with chemotherapy, but mostly cancer will come back. Small cell cancer is very aggressive. But this didn't happen in Joe Tippens. And he was the only patient cured from cancer of all 1,100 participants of that clinical trial. Can you imagine? Was it fenbendazole? How does it work? Of course, fenbendazole caught attention of the scientists. Fenbendazole can disrupt microtubule formation. What are microtubules? These are small structures that look like uh, small tubules inside our cells that for example, produce cytoskeleton of the cells, helping them to keep their shape. Or transport some substances or help to form this spindle uh, while the cell is divided. And div division is the most important process of cancer cells. By the way, we have some drugs in our chemotherapy that work with uh, microtubules, like for example, Vinca alkaloids uh, like vincristin, vinblastin, or like a paclitaxel or docetaxel. These are very famous against many types of cancer. So, is fenbendazole is just uh, one more chemotherapy agent, one more poison? I would say it has some other mechanisms that are very promising. For example, I was talking about mitochondrial metabolic theory of cancer when um, cancer uh, cannot produce energy using oxygen like our cells do, it becomes evolutionary, more um, ancient, more primitive, and uh, for production of energy it needs a lot of glucose, because it's not very energy effective process. That's why they say cancer loves sugar, right? And also, when the sugar is degraded, by this process without oxygen, um, the lactate is produced, meaning it's an lactic acid. Acid makes microenvironment of the tumor acidic and helps it to survive chemotherapy and radiation therapy. That's why it's another problem. In order for cancer cell to grab this glucose, to eat it, to consume it and to produce energy and lactate, it needs a special transporter called GLUT1 transporter. 
The thing is that this GLUT1 is overexpressed, overproduced in many tumors, in 99% of squamous cell tumors and in 50% of adenocarcinomas. And you can already guess that fenbendazole can block this GLUT1 through P53 pathway. So it will starve the cancer, it will prevent acidification of the microenvironment, making the cancer very sensitive to our treatments. Hmm, that's interesting. By the way, fenbendazole can also uh, induce cancer cell apoptosis, or it can be antifibrotic in lungs. Also quite an interesting action. Just to show you an example, you can see here that fenbendazole can be active even if the tumor is chemotherapy resistant. That's what we were talking about before. That means if the tumor is resistant to chemotherapy, we can theoretically try fenbendazole to kill this tumor. Well, that's very interesting. Look, this article shows the interesting table of different uh, cell lines like skin cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, lymphoma, leukemia, uh, colon cancer, liver cancer, cervical cancer, where fenbendazole showed its effect. Also, don't forget about radio sensitivity of the tumors. We know that many tumors, they have hypoxia, meaning low oxygen. And um, this is good for tumors because they don't need oxygen. And this hypoxia, no oxygen, helps them to survive radiation therapy. Radiation therapy needs oxygen to um, oxygenize, to oxidize their cells, cancer cells, to kill them, to damage them. And we know that to over overcome this uh, resistance, we need to increase the levels of oxygen in the tumor. For example, with hyperbaric oxygenation or through nitroimidazoles. These are antiparasitic drugs and, of course, as you guessed, fenbendazole. By the way, there is a nice systematic review that analyzed more than 10,000 patients that showed that using of these methods improves their sensitivity of tumors to radiation therapy. That's, that's already perfect. This is a perfect drug. Unfortunately, everything has its negative side. First of all, let's talk about its problems. It's uh, not very absorbable. It's poorly soluble. Also, as you can see here, this is fenbendazole. Even if it's absorbed, it will undergo extensive changes in the liver. One of the changes goes through CYP3A4 system or cytochrome that acts on most of the drugs. And it will produce oxfendazole. By the way, it's an active substance. Active form of fenbendazole. So this is a good reaction. But anything that changes the activity of this enzyme, and it can be a lot of stuff, many drugs and supplements, can increase the rate of this reaction or decrease the rate of this reaction. And many people, they blame the farm industry that, okay, they don't want to research these antiparasitic drugs, they want only to uh, get money. Well, of course, they want to get money, we know that. But they are also producing and investigating the drug oxfendazole. This is, you see here, the active form of, fen of fenbendazole but much more soluble and absorbable, much more bioavailable. And they already held the clinical trial first phase where they were understanding which dose is better tolerated and they found out that, okay, 15 milligrams per kilo five times a day was quite um, well tolerated in the healthy individuals. So that's already something. I think they are already thinking about making a phase two trial. Let's see how effective it is. Next thing, of course, safety. We know that, okay, fenbendazole is very safe, very good. But we need to understand that if we want to treat cancer, we need high doses chronically, and these doses must be absorbed. It's safe when it's not absorbed. Of course, it's safe. But what if it's uh, in high doses and always absorbed? And actually, it may affect liver. You can see here the liver may increase the numbers of cells and the sizes of liver cells. And who knows what will happen next. And here you can see the different uh, 
forms of fenbendazole, how to improve its solubility and bioavailability so it can reach the tumor better in the body. And you can see here different nanoparticles, uh, different micellar forms, and uh, it can be mixed with, for example, dimexide, dimethyl sulfoxide, or uh, look, the form with methyl beta cyclodextrin. And when it's mixed, you can see here that its solubility increases 60,000 times over the usual fenbendazole. Can you imagine that? That's already very interesting and promising. Despite the lack of any approval of clinical trials, people still use it, self-administer it, and we can understand them because they have a problem, they have a disease, and they don't have time to wait for 10 years while they will do all the needed phases and uh, register it finally. Most often, regimen used is one gram per day for three consecutive days, and then four days are resting. And then again, the cycle is repeated. Of course, we understand that uh, people with compromised liver function, with cirrhosis, must be very cautious. And uh, we don't know, maybe it should be administered together with some uh, hepatoprotective uh, stuff, like maybe antioxidants, maybe as uh, adamethionine or maybe slimerine. Uh, who knows? We don't have this information yet. Will it help or not? But let's talk about several case reports that were published recently uh, with the use of fenbendazole. First was the old man with uh, B-cell uh, diffuse lymphoma. He was taking just fenbendazole, one gram, as I told you before. And um, here you can see he had some neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy. I'm not sure it's because of fenbendazole or maybe he was getting some chemotherapy before. Uh, you know, the stingling and numbness of the fingers that uh, oncology patients often have because of chemotherapy. But his uh, size of his lymph nodes was decreasing, decreasing, decreasing and uh, improving, uh, meaning that uh, the tumor was uh, getting under control. And within 12 months, just fenbendazole, uh, no new metastases were found or no... Uh, worsening of the condition was found. But we're not sure if it's fenbendazole or something else, or maybe just placebo, who knows. But in the heart, I believe it was fenbendazole. Okay, 63-year-old man with uh, kidney cancer, with metastasis, he was trying different types of treatment, uh, he could not tolerate it, and the last one, he uh, tried um, immune therapy, he couldn't tolerate it well also, but he just did one month of treatment of immune therapy and started fenbendazole. And uh, then they checked, they checked his tumor uh, on MRI and they found out that his tumors resolved almost completely. And within 10 months, without any treatment, only fenbendazole, uh, nothing grew. No cancer progression, no metastasis anymore and no serious side effects reported by these patients. I really wish he is cured. By the way, if you want to see more details on these cases, you can watch this article here. There, there are authors and the name of the article. One more article on uh, the cancer of uh, his urethra. He had surgery and then after four years he had a lot of metastasis in the lungs, in the brain. He got some chemotherapy, he got some radiation therapy. And everything was not bad, all the tumors went away, except one leaf node that was growing. It was growing, growing, even the patient had this treatment. Meaning, looks like it was resistant to this treatment. But when he started uh, Jotipens protocol with fenbendazole, not totally Jotipens, because he was taking one gram here, plus uh, vitamin E, E, plus curcumin, plus CBD oil, and we see that his uh, lymph node became normal size and not growing anymore for already nine months, just on fenbendazole. That is very cool. And third case, also the tumor of the bladder, had some treatment, had some surgery, chemotherapy, and plus fenbendazole. And it was a complete response. Of course, it can be complete response of the tumor total disappearance with chemotherapy, but who knows, maybe fenbendazole helped her. Still, this drug has a very big potential, very promising.
And don't forget about negative side. Two patients, here 8 year old female with lung cancer and uh, she started immune therapy plus fenbendazole. Unfortunately, she had this liver toxicity. Uh, she had to stop taking uh, all the treatment, but liver restored quite well because liver is a very unique uh, organ, can restore itself very well. And uh, afterwards, she did not use fenbendazole anymore, just used uh, immune therapy again. I don't know, maybe she was taking something else. Maybe it was the um, wrong combination with immune therapy. We don't have this information yet. We need to investigate it. Maybe she had some problems with her liver at the very beginning. Maybe if we used uh, liver protective drugs, uh, it would help her. We don't have this information, unfortunately. We need to study it. Next, uh, female, the same. She was taking fenbendazole and she got this liver toxicity. So two cases of liver toxicity with the use of fenbendazole. That's why even this drug is very promising. Of course, there is nothing 100% safe. You must remember it always. Especially some people, they download these books, how to cure cancer, a lot of natural remedies. Some people send me their lists what they are taking, 15 supplements in the morning, 20 supplements in the afternoon. Oh my god, I am thinking, really? Don't take more than 5 and 6 maybe, not, not more. Because you never know how they will contract, you never know what will happen to the liver. You cannot, you totally cannot predict it. Try, if it's not working, change the scheme, change the scheme again. But don't take 20 supplements. It's very hard for your body. So. Dear friends, thank you for listening for this video. I want to thank the people who are supporting this channel. If you want to support, you can see the links under this video. Also, as you see, not so many cases are published in the scientific journals, but I am sure that many people tried penbendazole, and um, I hope um, you will share it to the others. What is your experience? What did you treat? What was the tumor cause? Did you have any side effects? We would appreciate if you shared your experience with us. And that's all for today. I wish you good luck. God bless you. And please be healthy. Goodbye. Don't be afraid.